pericardium which means around the heart pericardium is a fibrocerus sac which surrounds the heart and the roots of the great vessels which enter or leave the heart it is located in the middle mediastinum and lies just behind the body of the sternum and the second to sixth costal cartilages it lies in front of the fifth to eighth thoracic vertebrae the pericardium consists of two parts an outer single layer of fibrous pericardium and a inner serous pericardium the serous pericardium is a double layered serous sac which can be further subdivided into two layers an outer parietal layer which is adherent to the overlying fibrous pericardium and an inner visceral layer which is adherent to the underlying myocardium also called epicardium thus the pericardium consists of three layers from outer to inner they are outer fibrous pericardium inner to it lies the parietal layer of serous pericardium and the innermost is the visceral layer of serous pericardium a slit like potential space present between the two layers of serous pericardium is known as the pericardial cavity it is filled with a thin film of serous fluid called pericardial fluid this fluid acts as a lubricant and facilitates the sliding of the two layers of serous pericardium over each other during cardiac movements the fibrous pericardium is a cone shaped sac which is made up of tough fibrous tissue the apex is truncated and directed superiorly it lies at the level of the sternal angle it blends with the adventitia of the great vessels that is the aorta and the pulmonary trunk it is also continuous with the pretracheal layer of deep cervical fascia the base is broad and directed inferiorly it fuses with the upper surface of the central tendon of diaphragm posteriorly it is related to the posterior mediastinum and the root of the lung which contains the principal bronchi the posterior mediastinum contains the descending thoracic aorta the veins that is the azygous and hemiazygous veins and the viscera that is esophagus and thoracic duct the fibrous pericardium is anteriorly related to the anterior mediastinum the anterior margin of the lung and pleura and two ligaments which connect it to the posterior surface of the body of sternum that is superior and inferior sternopericardial ligaments on each side of the fibrous pericardium descend the phrenic nerve accompanied by the pericardiophrenic vessels they are further related to the mediastinal pleura and the mediastinal surface of lungs structures piercing the fibrous pericardium are same as the contents of the fibrous pericardium they are the arteries and veins which enter or leave the heart that is the superior and inferior vena cava the pulmonary vessels the two pulmonary arteries and the four pulmonary veins and the major artery arising from the heart that is the ascending aorta The main function of the fibrous pericardium is to support and stabilize the heart and prevent its over distension. The incisions given in the fibrous pericardium are vertical so as to avoid injuring the phrenic nerves or the accompanying pericardiophrenic vessels. A brief description of the embryology or development of the heart is important to understand the formation of the serous pericardium and the arrangement of its layers. The pericardial cavity develops from the intraembryonic coelom, which is a cavity of the lateral plate mesoderm and subdivides it into an outer somatopleuric layer and an inner splanchnopleuric layer. The heart tube develops in the floor of this pericardial cavity and invaginates into the pericardial sac. As a result, the heart tube 
is surrounded by the inner layer of lateral plate mesoderm that is the splanchnopleuric layer. This splanchnopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm then develops to form the inner visceral layer of serous pericardium. And the outer layer that is the somatopleuric intraembryonic mesoderm develops into the outer parietal layer of serous pericardium. The two layers of serous pericardium that is visceral and parietal layers are continuous with each other at the two ends of the heart tube that is the arterial end and the venous end. As the heart tube folds the two ends of the heart tube come close to each other thus forming a small space or recess between the two ends known as the transverse sinus of pericardium. At the venous end of the heart tube develops the atria and the veins enter this end that is the four pulmonary veins and the two vena cava. As the atria increase in size the veins move apart from each other thus forming an irregular recess in the pericardium called the oblique sinus. Thus during the development and the folding of the heart tube Two recesses or sinuses develop in the serous pericardium that is the transverse sinus and the oblique sinus. The transverse sinus of pericardium is a horizontal gap present between the arterial and venous ends of the cardiac tube. It is bounded anteriorly by the two large arteries that is the ascending iota and pulmonary trunk which are enclosed in a single tube of serous pericardium. Posteriorly, it is related to the veins that is the superior vena cava and the upper margin of the left atrium. Superiorly lies the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk and inferior to it lies the left atrium. On each side, the transverse sinus opens and communicates with the pericardial cavity. The applied significance of the transverse sinus is that during cardiac surgery, after the pericardial sac is opened anteriorly, a finger is passed through the transverse sinus of the pericardium just posterior to the iota and the pulmonary trunk, as shown in the picture above. A temporary ligature is passed through the transverse sinus around the two vessels, that is the iota and pulmonary trunk. This is used to insert the tubes of the heart-lung machine and also can be used to control hemorrhage during the surgery. The oblique sinus. It is a blind cul-de-sac present just behind the left atrium. It is closed on all sides except inferiorly. It is bounded anteriorly by the left atrium and posteriorly it is closed by the overlying parietal pericardium. Superiorly lies the upper margin of the left atrium and inferiorly it is open and communicates with the pericardial cavity. On the right it is bounded by the right pulmonary veins and inferior vena cava while the left side lie the left pulmonary veins. This oblique sinus acts as a bursa which permits the pulsations of the left atrium and also provides a space for the left atrium to expand during filling. The fibrous pericardium and the parietal layer of serous pericardium has the same blood supply and nerve supply as the overlying thoracic wall. That is, it is supplied by the internal thoracic artery, musculophrenic artery and branches from the descending thoracic iota. The venous blood drains into the internal thoracic veins anteriorly and the azygous vein posteriorly. Whereas the visceral layer of serous pericardium has the same blood supply as the underlying viscera that is the heart, supplied by the coronary arteries and drains into the coronary sinus. Similarly, the nerve supply of the fibrous layer and the parietal layer is the somatic nerve that is the phrenic nerve. These layers are thus sensitive to pain. Whereas the visceral layer has the same nerve supply as the viscera or the heart that is autonomic nerve supply by the cardiac plexus. 
The visceral layer is therefore insensitive to pain. Pericarditis that is inflammation of the serous pericardium. It is usually caused by a viral or bacterial infection, a common cause being rheumatic fever. The pain originates in the parietal pericardium which is sensitive to pain and the referred pain is usually felt in the region of the precordium and the epigastrium. This pericarditis may lead to accumulation of fluid in the pericardial cavity known as pericardial effusion. In case of blood in the pericardial cavity, it is known as hemopericardium and air is known as pneumopericardium. The treatment of pericardial effusion is pericardiosynthesis that is aspiration of the pericardial fluid with the help of a needle. Two routes commonly used are the subcostal that is through the left costoxiphoid angle and the parasternal that is usually through the left 5th to 6th intercostal space. The common route is the subcostal route where the needle is inserted at an angle of 45 degree with the skin and it is inserted backwards, upwards and towards the left shoulder. Pericardial tamponade. It is rapid accumulation of fluid in the pericardial cavity. As the fibrous pericardium prevents the outward expansion of the fluid, this, interfer this fluid interferes with the atrial filling during diastole leading to decreased cardiac output from the heart. It is a medical emergency and needs to be immediately treated by pericardiosynthesis. Thank you for the patient hearing.